Hi guys, so it is almost 9 a.m. right now and I am going to be starting the 24 hour readathon really, really soon. I decided to wait until after I woke up because I was really not feeling well last night and I didn't really, for some reason, want to start at midnight. I felt like, for some reason, my body was just like, no, we're not going to do this at midnight because you need to sleep. So I decided to wait until I woke up and start the 24 hour readathon from there. So the itinerary basically is finishing Beautiful Creatures because I have like just over 300 pages left of that or 200 pages left of that, not, excuse me. Then reading uh, Fragile Like Us and then Hate List and then hopefully getting through at least a little bit of Catching Fire but I'm not quite sure. Um, but today I am going to be taking a, a bit of a break about 2.30 because I have to go to the public library to go and get my new library card so I can go and start using Overdrive, which will be so nice because then I can start renting out books for like free and that way I can get through a lot more books and um, it might even be helpful to like get some to help me get through some of the physical ones or something like that. So pretty excited. Um, so yeah, I am going to get started right here quick because it's about nine o'clock now, like I said. So Let's see how this goes. Okay, it is about 10.16 right now, and I've just read about 83 pages of Beautiful Creatures, and I'm getting very hungry, so I'm going to take a bit of a break to grab something to eat for breakfast because I haven't eaten yet since I've woken up. Um, yeah, so I have now about a hundred and less than 160 pages left of Beautiful Creatures, which I'm so excited for because I love this book, but I'm so excited to be uh, done with the first one because honestly I'm enjoying it way more I think this time than I did the first time if that's even possible. Um, I do want to note though that I'm not quite seeing what a lot of people had problems with. I think maybe a lot of people had problems with this series in terms of the insta love which is very very untrue. It is not an insta love story at all. It is definitely a build. There is an instant attraction because of this connection between Ethan and Lena, but it takes for freaking ever before they actually admit that they are in love with each other and that there is something more to it. There's definitely a lot of hints that they have an attraction to each other and that they really do like each other, but it takes for freaking ever before they even decide to get into a relationship. Like, I think it took probably 350 pages before Ethan finally asked Lena to be his girlfriend. So, just so you know, there's not, it's not insta-love. It takes a very long time before they actually end up getting together. And they're just very close. And because of their closeness, their attraction is a lot stronger. And I think that also Ethan is very much a protector of Lena. So he is constantly having to hold her hand because it's what comforts her and what helps protect her. So there's that. I just, I love this book so much. I love this series so much because I love Ethan and I love Lena and they just make me so happy. And yeah, so I should be able to finish this probably within the next couple of hours and then get started with Fragile Like Us. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go make something to eat real quick. And I think I'm going to also, I'm going to read a little bit more of this. And then after I get through another probably 100 pages or so, I'm going to go take a shower because I really need one. And I will be listening to my audiobook of Feel Good 101 some more while I do that so that I can get some more reading time in. And uh, yeah, so I will talk to you guys probably later today maybe in the afternoon or so. Hi guys, so it is almost 2.20 in the afternoon and I just finished the first book in the Beautiful Creatures series, Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. And I'm about to cry because I'm so happy. I am still so in love with this book and oh, I can't even tell you guys how much I love this story. It's one of my favorites. It's been one of my favorites since I was like 14. It's just, it's, it's a crazy ride, I gotta say. It's definitely, it's not a hard book to get through. It's emotionally taxing, though, especially towards the very end of this first book, um, because there's a lot that happens, and there's a bit of a twist, and it really, really messes things up for our main characters, and it makes me so sad, but was one of the reasons that I loved this series so much, so expect a review of this coming out sometime next week, um, because when I get back on campus, I'm going to be reviewing all of the books that I read during the 24-hour readathon, but I am one book down, and I'm so excited, and i only been in the 24-hour readathon now for about five hours now, um, not including my breaks, and I took a shower too and listened to some more of my audiobook. 
So at this point in the day, I have now read a total of 239 pages, and I've also listened to 22 minutes of my Feel Good 101 audiobook, and that's pretty good so far. I'm going to be listening to my audiobook, I think, for a little bit more, and I'm going to be listening to it when I head over to the library because my sister should be getting home fairly soon from school, and I don't want to start my next book until I come back, um, and I think I'm going to really get through at least Fragile Like Us before this evening evening because I think it's it's actually smaller than this I'm pretty sure it's only like just about 400 pages I think so I should be able to get through that before the end of the afternoon into the early evening and then spending the rest of the evening reading Hate List which is about 400 pages as well and then I think I will be able to get through Catching Fire overnight. I should be able to, I think, honestly, and that's going to be a pretty awesome if I can. That's if I don't sleep. Hi guys, so now it is almost three o'clock. I've just gotten back from the library and got my new library card. So basically I can get books on overdrive now for free and I'm so excited. So I listened to my audiobook on the way to town and back and that was about another 26 minutes I think of audio. So I'm currently at like 289 pages I think total today so far. It's freaking awesome. So now I am going to start reading Fragile Like Us, my next book on my thing. And I'm actually really digging the fact that this is a white naked cover because the dust jacket is like purple and white and black. And I was expecting this to have a white naked cover or a black naked cover. And I'm surprised to see that it's white. So I'm going to sit and read this for quite a while. Um, I think Robert said he might try to come over today at some point, but I don't know when that is. And he's really just going to let me read. He's just going to come hang out while I do some reading. So anyway, um, I don't really have anything else planned. I'm not going out again today. Um, at least that's not my plan to. And, um, yeah, it's just kind of a, maybe a nice reading day and get through books. Is it bad when 15 pages into a new book you already do not like the main character and you kind of want to smack her? It's kind of how I'm feeling already with Fragile Like Us. Hi guys, so it is 427 right now and I've just finished reading 105 pages of Fragile Like Us. Um, as you could tell from the clip I showed earlier, don't quite know how I feel about it. Um, it's currently sitting at a three star for me. It's not bad. It's definitely a darker contemporary because it deals with some kind of heavier topics, but it's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the main character because basically I do relate to her in some aspects about her story and everything, which I don't want to go into a lot. Um, but some of the things that she talks about in the very beginning really put me off from her because basically she has this thing where she wants to get a boyfriend in her junior year of high school or like in her 11th year because this is a place in Brighton, uh, England, which is really funny because I know a lot of YouTubers that live in Brighton. Um, but yeah, she wants to get a boyfriend because she's never had one and goes to a private school. She wants to have sex for the first time and lose her virginity, which that put me off so much because that is like the furthest thing that I had in my mind my jun junior year of high school. But every person's different. Every person has their own things about them. But she's just so obsessed with it and it's so stupid. Like I don't understand teenagers who have such obsessive thoughts about wanting to lose their virginity. Like it's not like I don't see the point in that. I don't see the but I'm not a person that has has ever been a person that is like I just want to like lose my virginity to absolutely anyone I don't care if it's a fling or not I've always been the kind of person that I've always I've only wanted to have sex like with someone I actually trusted and cared about and actually like wanted to have sex with that's always been my thing um so it always just makes me really uncomfortable to see main characters completely disregard that and be like I just want to have sex with anyone at any time and have like just fun with it like that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me but I don't know so it's currently at a three star for me I'm not quite sure how I feel about it it's definitely not bad in the slightest it's actually kind of good honestly but I just I don't really like the main character I think she's very whiny and very contrived and just really dumb in my opinion but she does have some very redeeming qualities um 
because this novel does deal with some very heavy topics, so I will place a trigger warning now for Fragile Like Us by Sarah Bernard. Trigger warning for abuse and, uh, dem like, physical abuse, not nothing other than that, and panic attacks, anxiety. Um, there is a character that has bipolar disorder. She's not a very prominent character, but she does, it is mentioned that she has bipolar disorder, and they mentioned the panic attacks that come with it. Um, and the... That's really the trigger warnings I've gotten to at this point. Um, there also is talk of alcohol and obviously sex, as I've talked about. There's like a small mention of a time where she was she refused to smoke pot. So if you're sensitive to that, there's that. But it's very much a teenager story. Like it looks like it was written by an actual teenager, and this is like a slice of life story, which I really like. I do really enjoy those kinds of contemporaries where it feels very natural. But. I'm kind of just still iffy with it. So I'll, I'm going to see how it fares through the rest of the day. Um, it's actually going by fairly quickly, honestly. Like I said, I'm 105 pages into it, and it's like not quite 400 pages. And it's like I've already like about a th almost a quarter of the way through it. So it's going pretty decently so far, but I'll kind of see how it is through the rest of the day. Hi guys, so it's about 8.30 right now and just a quick update as to how things have been going. The evening's been a little crazy. I've had a little bit more breaks I think than I normally have the rest of the day um, because it was getting close to dinner time and stuff like that and had to clean up the house a little bit for my mom to help her out. But I am currently on page 306 out of 300 something, give me one second, out of 399 of Fragile Like Us. So I'm nearly done. I have less than 100 pages left of this novel and currently my reading, my page number for today, including my audiobooks, is I think 593. I calculated it before recording this clip, so it should be accurate. And yeah, so I've read almost 600 pages today so far, and I'm so excited because that I still have so much time before the readathon ends, which I think I'm gonna try to make my readathons, like, start at a specific time now. Like, maybe actually going from, instead of, like, midnight, starting it much later because I felt so much better doing it earlier today and I feel like I've gotten so much more reading done because of it I'm not quite sure why um, but yeah so once this is done I'm gonna move on to hate list because this will probably take me another hour or so to get through then I will move on to hate list which is another 400 and so just over 400 pages I think it's like 406 I think so I should be able to finish that by probably late tonight and then get through a large part of Catching Fire. I seriously think I'm going to get through a huge amount of Catching Fire. Um, that is if I don't fall asleep. So we shall see. Hello everyone. It is currently 945 and I have just finished Fragile Like Us by Sarah Barnard. Um, there's a lot of thoughts going through my head right now. This is a very, very heavy book, um, much heavier than I had really anticipated. It is very much a darker contemporary because it actually deals with a lot of themes that I wasn't expecting. Um, things like abuse, mental illness, um, toxicity, really, of certain individuals who are damaged that have friends. And I didn't expect to really relate to this as much as I did. I couldn't relate to it 100% as a toxic relationship I've gone through was not exactly the same as the main character had undergone, but I have been in a toxic relationship with someone and it was, I felt very validated with a lot of the feelings that I had felt um, regarding my feelings for why I needed to stick around with this person as opposed to ditching them and leaving them. So I feel that that aspect of that toxic relationship I was involved in was validated. Um, and this really made me proud of the fact that I was able to move out of that relationship that I was in because it truly messed me up as it, as it is in terms of how I am with people. But I honestly could have been a whole lot worse in the end. And I'm glad that I didn't end up that way. Um, because the way that it ends in this story is not very pleasant, I will say. Um, 
there's just so much that's going through my head right now because I can't quite process everything, but overall rating actually is going to be a four out of five stars. It's not perfect. There's definitely some things that I think need to be looked at and I think need to be addressed in terms of the overall story, but it wasn't that bad actually and I think is a fairly interesting representation of toxic relationships and friendships with damaged individuals and by damaged I mean basically people who have gone through things like abuse whether it's physical or sexual or just people who've essentially gone through a lot in their lives that makes it harder for them to establish clear true relationships and that's what I mean by damaged people um because that's kind of the terminology that is used for this character that is essentially damaged and it's very similar to the terminology I would hear from people like my mother, who's a social worker, who deals with children who are actually in a very similar positions as this character. But definitely not one I would pick up again, only because it was so heavy. Um, and that's, what te that's typical for a lot of mental health books, is that they get so heavy for me that I will keep them on my shelf for future reference if several years down the line I decide to read it again. But definitely... Not going to pick up again in the near future, I think, but still really, really interesting. So that is now book two done for the day, and I still have just under 12 hours left of the readathon, so I'm going to pick up an actual another mental health book, uh, Hate List by Jennifer Brown, which I'm really hoping that's not going to super trigger me because it deals with a shooter. Um, I don't think it should because I'm kind of at a point where in my headspace, I'm okay I mean, they caught the guy that shot his parents on my campus. If you guys watch my reading vlog from the past week, that's all good. Like, that's all taken care of. So I feel a lot better since that. Um, so I think I should be fine. But, you know, I'm just going to try to tread through it lightly. And if I get to a point where it's a little too much, I'll step away from it, obviously. I'm going to kind of check myself as I go, as anyone should do with any mental illness book or any book that, you know, talks about topics that are very triggering for individuals. Anytime you read a book that has a triggering element in it, whether it's a character that has dealt with abuse or has been a part of a school shooting or has done drugs or has become an alcoholic, please, if, if, if it at any point makes you uncomfortable or makes you feel very triggered, feel free to step away from the book because your mental health when reading is still important despite the fact that it's fiction. Because even though it is fiction, it is still sometimes very, very triggering for a lot of people. And so it's totally valid for you to be able to take a step back to collect yourself and be able to come at the story again maybe days later or if it's not as bad, you know, maybe taking an hour break from it just to kind of recollect yourself. That is so valid and I feel like that's not talked about a lot is the idea of being able to step away from a book just so that you can really like check yourself out. Okay guys, so it's about 11.16 right now and I am about currently 83 pages through Hate List by Jennifer Brown. And I'm very conflicted. I'm conflicted because, for one, obviously I feel not exactly triggered, but scared to be reading this book because of modern things that have happened within the last several months with things like the Parkland shooting and the fact that I was locked up and didn't know if I was going to be in the mess of a, another school shooting. It really scares me because I can see these images so vividly in my head that it makes it almost unbearable to want to read. But the reason I'm conflicted is because the, the book is, like, it's, it's good in the fact that it does that. It's providing these really strong images and the story is about this girl whose boyfriend shoots up their school and she's also partially to blame because they created this list of people that they hated that her boyfriend ended up shooting and killing several people and injuring others. And I don't know, it's 
I'm really, I'm honestly, like, enjoying the book. Like, it's, it's actually good. I'm enjoying seeing things from her perspective, but I'm also, like, really scared reading through it because it's so graphic and so devastating and stuff like that. It's, it's making my stomach turn, honestly. But I almost don't want to stop reading it because it's important and it's important for me to read things of this nature because this stuff happens and I just don't know but I'm physically starting to feel sick from reading this book so I think I'm gonna DNF it about 83 pages in not because it's bad not because it's poorly written or anything but because I physically cannot stomach this book after reading four chapters of it and seeing the descriptions of this shooting. Just so you guys know, I am DNFing this. I am still counting the pages for it that I have read, which was, like I said, 83. But I just, I just can't do this one right now. I, I will keep this on my shelf because I do want to read it at some point, but I think it's going to have to be when I feel comfortable coming back to it. Because like I said, I think it's very well written so far from what I've read. But I think at the current moment, it's not a good idea. And this was counting for my mental illness category for the emoji thon But after reading Fragile Like Us, I realize there's a lot that deals with mental illness involved in that. So I am going to use that as another category for Fragile Like Us because I did not know that it also has mental illness rep in it. Um, so that'll be taken care of super easy. Okay, I've actually decided that I'm going to go to bed because my head hurts now. That just really drained me, honestly. I feel so drained from reading that emotionally. I just can't. So anyway, that's going to basically be it for me for this readathon. I know that... I started earlier and I was planning on getting through a lot today, but it just didn't end up happening. Um, and I'm, I'm not upset about it at all. I finished two books. That's freaking great for me. So as far as my plans for the other readathons, I think what I'm going to end up doing that's going to be more manageable for me and my sleep and just my well-being... I think what I'm going to start doing is doing a 24-hour and 72-hour reading vlog. Where, if you're familiar with the 24 and 48 challenge, it's where you try to read 24 hours within 48 hours. So, like, within two days, try to read about 24 hours within those two days. So, I think what I'm going to do is going to try to do that, um, but doing it within a full weekend. So, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is 72 hours, um... Reading 24 hours within that time period. I feel like that's going to be a lot easier for me, especially if I have, like, homework and stuff on the weekend I have to do. And it gives me a little bit more time to have breaks, you know? Because I feel like with something, especially, like, Hate List, I'm going to need multiple... I would need multiple breaks by itself to, like, get through the book. Um, and I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be more effective for me. And who knows, you know? Maybe it ends up being that... There's weekends when I do this that I have way more free time and I can crank a book out each day during the weekend. I, who knows? It is really going to depend. But yeah, I think that I'll start doing kind of more along the, those lines or at least doing a weekend vlog of my reading. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys would rather see. If you would rather see me do 24 hour and 72, uh, 24 and 72 challenges or just doing straight up weekend reading vlogs and cutting that part out of my weekly reading vlogs. I mean, let me know what you guys think, what you think would end up being better, um, because I might try that next time. I might try that if you want to see the weekend reading vlogs, I'll do that next week. Or if you want me to do the 24 and 72 I can do that next month for April. I Because I only do the readathons like once a month, so... 
I think that just might, either one will be better for me, I think, in terms of the long run and how I've noticed my reading habits have gotten when it comes to 24 hour time spans. I definitely do not have the stamina to sit and read for 24 straight hours, even though I try my hardest. I'm very proud of what I got through today though. And even though I couldn't get through Hate List, I'm still glad that I at least attempted it because I knew going into this book that it was not gonna be something very easy for me to get through. But I'm glad that I at least started it and know that I really do like what it's going for, but I understand my own limits and can say, okay, this is not a book I can read at this current moment. Maybe a few months down the road I'll pick it back up again and maybe maybe it'll be longer. I don't really know. It's going to really depend because um, just currently with everything that's gone on recently, it is not something I can stomach right now. But, so yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for joining me in this reading vlog. I'm sorry that it's definitely not 24 hours. It's more like 15 hours. I try my best, but sometimes I just can't do it. So, yeah, but thank you guys so much for joining me. If you guys did enjoy this vlog, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already and you'd like to be, hit that button down below and subscribe to become an owlet in our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.